you know, I've been tracking digital for 21 years. And the pandemic was the ultimate victory lap of digital and the internet. Most of us had three or four days to move our work lives, our school lives, our buying lives, and our entertainment lives online. And what couldn't be done online, by and large, couldn't be done. This was also the period that really solidified changes in the entertainment industry that have been coming for a long time. In America, in 1946, we sold 4.3 billion movie tickets. Last year, not excuse me, 2019, the last real year, uh, the population had more than doubled since 1946. So to keep pace, we would have had to sell about 9 billion movie tickets. Instead, we sold 1.2 billion. The movie theater business has been shrinking since the 1940s. And of course, the explanation for that was television. So even before COVID, we knew the theatrical business was getting smaller and smaller. I've been predicting in the US and the UK that half the movie theaters would disappear over the next few years. But no one ever anticipated that the movie theater business would come to a grinding halt. And it's still not clear it's ever gonna return. I think it will but it's gonna be in a much smaller form. The real story of entertainment in COVID has been the absolute victory of streaming. Now, Netflix, Hulu, they were in place before the pandemic. Just before COVID started, we saw two services premiere, Apple TV Plus, which was really Apple sort of dabbling in the entertainment business. I don't think they had a whole lot of conviction. You know, Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, hired two of the best Sony executives to come over to Apple, two guys named uh, Zach and Jamie. And he sort of said, guys, I don't know if we really want to be in the entertainment business, but let's experiment. Let's dabble. See what you can do. And then almost as if he was reaching into his pocket looking for spare change, he says, oh, and here's $6 billion. So Apple was sort of dabbling uh, and Disney Plus, you know, Bob Iger at Disney, had, uh, he and all the other studios had contributed to the rise of Netflix. It was a great place to sell their old content and to make content for Netflix. And then they realized they were creating the biggest competitor they ever had. He was the first of the studio heads to stop selling to Netflix, announced shortly afterwards they were going to start their own service. And in November of 2019, Disney Plus and Apple TV Plus premiered. They took advantage of the pandemic, but no one ever anticipated we were going to be sitting home all day with nothing but time. There wasn't enough new content on Apple TV Plus or even Disney Plus, but they did do pretty well. Netflix was what rose to the moment. There are $12 billion a year in original content, now $18 billion a year. They had the catalog, the breadth the dozens and dozens of programs that most people had not watched and could. You know, the silly joke I make is during the pandemic, we didn't mind if the Irishman was four and a half hours. We had the time and Netflix came and we, we had, you know, uh, absolute uh, cultural phenomenon coming out of Netflix, Tiger King, uh, The Queen's Gambit, and Netflix came out of the uh, COVID, is coming out of the COVID, the most powerful entertainment company in history. No one has ever had this much control over the movie and television business. And I think the first dollar or first pound anyone spends on entertainment goes to Netflix. We now believe in America, people are gonna to subscribe to two and a half of these SVOD, subscription monthly services. 
during the pandemic, so we had Hulu and Netflix going in. We had Disney Plus and Apple TV Plus just as it began. During the pandemic, HBO converted to HBO Max with all of the Warner Brothers content. And uh, they're all now fighting for that two and a half. I think Netflix has a lock on the first 1.0. So the streaming wars are really going to be between Disney and HBO Warner, and now Paramount has just introduced their Paramount Plus. And there was also you know, some really interesting, odd things during COVID, and we can, uh, we can wrap it up with this, but Jeffrey Katzenberg, the legendary longtime CEO of Disney Film, he looked at what was happening with streaming and he believed in streaming, but he didn't want to compete with Netflix and Hulu and Disney and making half hour comedies and hour dramas and two hour movies or eight part miniseries. He thought there was too much competition. So he decided to reach out to young people, people on the go, and he wanted to give them seven to 10 minute clips every day. Quick Bites, which he called his company Quibi. And Katzenberg had this phenomenal track record. He did everything right. He raised $2 billion from the studios, Rupert Murdoch, Disney, because nobody wanted to bet against Katzenberg. He got the best talent to make these seven to 10 minute multi a seven to ten minute a day multi-part and he always you'd watch one part every day got steven spielberg reese witherspoon chrissy Teigen, some of the best talent there is he got the best executive talent as his partner he got meg whitman the legendary founding ceo of ebay and then later the ceo of uh, hp they did it all right Every decision I think was smart, except it was supposed to be, it was released in April of 2020. And uh, the problem was this was a service for people on the go that millennials would, uh, wa would watch a seven minute clip on the subway or the bus. So they'd get to their office early and they'd watch seven minutes or maybe take a coffee break or coming home. It was a service for people who were too busy to watch long stuff and they were on the go and he introduced it when nobody was going anywhere. And it was one of the most colossal failures. It wasn't even rejected. No one even, it was the tree in the forest. No one even knew that it actually had been introduced. And, uh, but it's one, it's gonna be studied in business schools forever. But coming out of COVID, Netflix stronger than ever, Disney now at 100 million subscribers, movie theaters weakened even more than they had been going in. The whole balance has shifted. And the question is, if I'm right that we're gonna pay for two and a half of these services, it's clearly Netflix for a while, it's probably Disney, who else is gonna get a slot? but it's a really interesting time in entertainment.